everybody. Welcome to Making It Monday, uh, the last day of February 28th, first day of March tomorrow. <sighs> I think, is it tomorrow or is it um, Wednesday? It's the first day of spring, isn't it? I think it might be tomorrow. I meant to, I meant to have looked it up. I heard it earlier today and I thought, oh, I must remember that. And of course it's gone in, out, in, out. I'm sure a lot of us uh, recognise that uh, skill <laughs> of uh, in and out. Yeah, so I think it's the first day of spring tomorrow, which is lovely, isn't it? Because it means we are on the uh, the downhill slope towards nicer days, longer days, um, warmer days, more days for sowing in the garden, if that's what you like to do. Um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, we'll all, uh, we'll all sort of, you know, get there in good spirits and keep on sewing. Um, sending lots of love to all the people of Ukraine and I know all of you will be most upset about what's happening. Um, and if you want to support them, um, Adrienne at uh, Zippy Doodle Applique, at Zippy Doodle Designs Applique, somebody can put the link on there for me if you don't mind, um, has released a gecko uh, applique and she did a little demonstration this morning on her page oh it's the cutest thing she had such a great idea for a hole punch <laughs> I thought it was absolutely super and I watched it from start to finish and I was really oh somebody says it is the first day of spring tomorrow thank you Jackie uh oh I'm getting names up today oh yes I do for for, for this Lizzie Curtis don't I <laughs> um yes so um Yes, so if you want to support um, our, the guys out in Ukraine, then uh, the profits from the Gecko Applique design is going to that great cause. So I just thought I'd mention that. Um, I'm in no way political, but obviously we are in great sympathy with them, haven't we? Aren't we? And I just hope those those wonderful reporters out there get home safe and sound. I really do. It worries, worries, worries the heck out of me every time I see them, especially on that balcony. Oh, yes. Let's, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let's just be positive. So, uh, like I say, welcome to Making It Mondays. Um, it's such a great time, isn't it, on a Monday at seven where we just kind of get together and, and make a lovely little project. Now, today is no exception because we're going to make Katie. And this is Katie. Um, I made a little version this afternoon and uh, you can see that it's got, it's got lots of interest, actually. It's got a little pocket in there, can you see? I did different coloured fabrics. Well, it's the same Easter egg fabrics as the outside. So I thought I'll, I'll do it again. Um, and then it has two pockets. So it has the little pocket and then it has like two more pockets, really. So um, I was thinking about what I would use this for. And obviously it's the perfect size to store any documents you want to keep safe. But I've put Easter, I made it with Easter egg fabric with daffodils and uh, crocuses and flowers and all sorts. It's, it's really, really pretty. And I thought I'd do a spot inside as well to complement it. And I thought, you know what, my my girls are no longer little girls, <laughs> as you might know. So I think I might just get them a voucher, a print it off, you know, from our favourite uh, shop, Amazon. And uh, they can get things for the kiddies and, and I can pop it in there and it can be a lovely little treat for them to have. So I'm, go I'm going to, obviously I'm going to make two identical girls, identical. Um, and so they can put their bits and bobs in there and it could come in really handy. The other thing, of course, it could be useful for is a little bit of crochet you might be doing, a little bit of English paper piecing you might be doing. So, you know, the list goes on. I always think uh, when we do a Making It Monday, it has to be useful. It has to be useful and also um, multifunctional, if you like. And this certainly is that. So uh, well done to Kath. Um, there, there isn't a code anymore, Melba. Uh, and if you're a gold member, you get it for free. So please go and read uh, the frequently asked questions in the, um, the, the featured posts, because in there it tells you as a gold member, you get them for free. You don't need to have a code. You just go straight to your projects page on the website and only you're, you can only get in there if you're a gold member. And of course, you know that you get all the Making It Monday patterns for free. 
so it's just a little extra and um, they all get deleted off um, tomorrow so you better hurry <laughs> except this one this one was down a week for everybody else the pattern is just a pound honestly it's worth so much more but we wanted to keep the group going and I didn't want it to be I didn't want it to exclude anybody and because of that we decided that a pound would be very very reasonable considering the amount of work and the amount of fabrics and costings that it, it is to actually make a making it monday project and we do it for you um, we do it um, because we want to um, keep you as our friend and and so in in the um, comments i can always see you all talking to each other and uh, and just having a lovely time really and that's what it's all about but to in to ensure that we keep going the price of a, a making it monday pattern is just a pound um, i think about six 60 pence comes into my account so I can pay costs out. That's all it is. Um, we don't get many downloaded, but that's not a problem. All I want to know is that the um, gold members get it for free. It's part of their subscription, which is just five pounds. <laughs> I, I, I always query it to myself when I say that because <laughs> it's, it's really good value for money. Um, so we're going to make Katie. I've kind of prepped... I've cut the fabric and that's as much as I've done so we'll kind of go through it um, bit by bit now obviously because the pattern costs you a pound I cannot and won't give you any measurements um, I will just go ahead and do what the pattern tells me to do and if you want to make it then please 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 go and purchase the pattern I would very much appreciate it uh, and if you're a goldie, you perhaps, oh, I'm going to put it somewhere I can read it. Um, you perhaps already have downloaded it and prepped your fabric. And if you have, brilliant. So um, what we're going to do first is, uh, like I said, we're going to cut this fabric. Now, the first thing I forgot to do, which I'll do now, is I need a couple of little squares for the, we're, got, we're going to use magnetic closures. And I just remembered I forgot to, fortunately I've got a bin full of scraps next to me. So I just need a little piece of fabric, a little piece of stabiliser for the magnetic closures. And that is a good tip. Always put stabiliser on the back of your magnetic clasps because they do get a bit of a tug. You know, when you... Where is it? What have I done with it? Here it is. When you actually open it, it's OK. It's not. You're not tugging it really hard, but you're putting a little bit of pressure on a fabric the lining that isn't stabilized you don't have to worry about the front ones can you see them flashing there you don't have to worry about them but these ones in the lining you absolutely do have to do that so I'll close that up put that away over here and I'll pop these to one side because I'll need them in a minute in fact almost immediately so I'm going to put my iron on it's ready I'm going to bring my ironing mat up and let's get going so I'll put you on the overhead so you can see what I'm doing. But like I said, I'm not going to give any secrets away. Um, like I say, I would like you to buy the pattern, please. Also, I don't know if you can see behind me, but this is the, the March bear pattern. Um, he's like a bunny bear. <laughs> and we'll have a look at that right at the end so you can see. That gets released tomorrow, and that's the Children in Need bear cushion for March and it's it's so cute so cute so thank you to Adrian for designing that for us it's fantastic so there we are we're on the overhead so we can see what we're doing I've tried to keep my picture out of the way so we can concentrate on the the matter at hand I've cut my fabric out and the first thing we need to do is to take our corners off both the lining and the outer so I'm using the same fabrics again um, and and, and by, by all means ask questions because our admin team who are just the best admin team in the entire world um, will answer your questions and uh, keep you straight whereas um, as you know I'm absolutely hopeless at uh, answering answering queries when I'm working and this is work this is work you might think this is um, a little you know sort of um, like a little hobby for me but it's it's not it's my work <laughs> so while i'm working <laughs> the ladies in the admin team can um are you not on youtube yes i am on youtube um lj i am on youtube unless it's um yeah i've got 81 people watching on youtube 
Uh, yeah, so what I've done is I've drawn the lines that it says in the pattern. So be aware that that's what the pattern says. So you need to do that first. Um, we're going to, I'm going to just move it. Now I'm cutting my lining and my outer at the same time. I've stabilized my outer fabric. Um, I'm, I've followed the pattern to the letter. Um, Kath will be absolutely amazed that I haven't gone off piste because I do tend to do that. But I'm going to be very, very good tonight. <laughs> very good and if anybody wants a bit of a giggle if they're feeling a little bit down then please go to um, a little bit further down my page here on Lizzie Curtis where I did a little Facebook live yesterday with um, Rosella because it's hilarious because that's what we like when we get together right so um, now I have cut my corners off as per the pattern I just now need to make a little mark or I can just make a just a Get a, get a biro or a pen and just make a mark as to where I'm going to put my poppers on the lining. So I'm doing that on the lining, okay? This is the outer, this is my lining. I just happen to have it right sides together at the moment, it doesn't matter. I'm just, um, I'm just, just happen to have it like that. <laughs> but you don't, you don't need the, the lining on, on here. Oh, sorry, the outer fabric. I do beg your pardon. I'm constant, trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so one inch and then a little mark in there. So I'm trying not to give you any measurements and things. It's quite difficult. So I've made two little marks here, as you can see. I'm popping my stabiliser over the top. Now, this is where I'm going to put a little mark in by row, if I can. Mm, it's a rubbish pen. Um, because I want to know exactly where that spot is because as soon as I put the iron on that now that's not going to play let's get another pen I'll use a pencil as soon as I put the iron on that these little marks will disappear obviously so I want to you can see we've got the dots so all I'm going to do I'm on the wrong side of the lining and I'm putting my stabiliser little um, squares there and I'm just using a medium weight iron-on stabiliser. So of course now you can see that those marks have stayed there. Whereas we've used a heat erasable, we wouldn't know where to put our magnetic clasps. So let's just get this one out of the way for the moment. Just pop it under the machine. So what we need to do now is put our magnetic closures on. Um, this tool is on my Amazon shop not identical but almost identical it's a screw punch tool and i'm using silicon mats now the other day somebody told me that you can actually get silicon mats like this and i just really can't remember where that was now um so if anybody can remember where they saw silicon mats i, th I don't know if it was might have been nicola that said where she saw some but um, anyway nickel um, a silicon mat is really good for punching into because obviously this could go through my fabric and into my desk and I've done that um, on many occasions so I'm going to put my washer over the marks that I've made like that I'm going to try and get them lined up I'm going to mark inside uh, the little washers there. I mean, I'm a little bit far away, but I'm hoping you can see okay. So I don't really want to come in too too far because I'll just have to move you again. But you know with the washers, we've got the centre point there. I'll show you up here. The centre point and then two little rectangle cutout bits. Well, it's the little rectangle cutout bits, there we go, that I've actually just marked. And that's where my holes are going to go so I can move those out of the way and then I can make holes here okay I'm just making sure I'm doing exactly what Kath tells me to do I can hear almost I can almost hear her saying no that's not what I said that's not what I said um, <laughs> I know she did I know she did so um we've made the holes so now I'm going to put my my little legs of my and then is the flat side it's the flat side that you're using. Okay, so if I show you the the, fl the fat side, I, I don't know if we, I can't do it sideways, but that's the fat side and that's the thin side. So it's the thin side we're using at the moment. So I'm gonna pop the legs through and you can do 
both at the same time. Such pretty poppers, these. And um, so you could use just use your regular cam snaps if you want to. There's no reason why not. I think the magnetic closures, I think, can look really smart. But um, it's up to you. If you've already got poppers, then use poppers, please. So now we put the washers over the legs. Again over the legs. Now um, you'll see <laughs> I have a hammer. <laughs> well because uh, as I've got older I've lost a lot of strength and I can't bend these over like I used to. I can use my my scissors to get so far and then I can't that's it that's as much strength as I've got. It's hopeless isn't it? Isn't it awful getting older? So I'm just going to move those out as best I can. You can see I'm struggling. And they, you shouldn't struggle if, if you're of, of a, a different age to me. <laughs> you shouldn't have to struggle. And now I always use the hammer just to knock them down. Now, um, some people bring the legs in to the popper and some people t put them out. It, there are no rules, but all I would say is that sometimes you can feel these little legs on the right side so you might want to bring them so they they fold over like that together over the top of the the, um, the magnetic anyway there we are so i'm sorry about the hammering but needs must i'll just put that to one side because i'll need it in just a little while just move all my bits and bobs so that means now we've put our fabulous fabulous rose gold poppers onto the front of our our wallet okay <laughs> julie says my knees take a while to come round in the morning as well yes i get i know that feeling julie in fact i've got a thing about i'll just stay in bed until i'm really ready to go really ready to get up <laughs> right the next stage is you've got a piece of fabric that you will have cut that is your inside little pocket on the short ends because there is a definite long ends and short ends on the short ends you're going to fold them over a quarter of an inch and you're going to press that down that you're then going to do right sides together you're on, you're not going to open the the folds you're going to keep them folded I might come in just a little bit so bear with while I do that because you're a little bit far away excuse um, my top there we are that's a little better if I have to move it again I will so um, yeah so let's just have a quick look at that again so I folded over the short ends okay both of those a quarter inch listen i haven't measured this i mean that's probably more like three eighths but um I, I, i'm just one of these people that think just fold it over and make it neat <laughs> so now you're doing right sides together and you're keeping those folds as they are can you see and then if you're feeling really, really righteousness, we have a little, yes, a little self-righteousness going on, you can pin them together. And so you keep, you're keeping all your fabrics um, nice and neat. I mean, if you want to, I won't, because you know I'm going to take these out as soon as, as soon as you turn around. So you can put another pin in there and then you're good to go. So now what we're going to do is stitch a quarter inch down both of those short sides. So there's your fold, there's your opening, and you see, like that um, and we're going to um, sew down these two short ends and then we're going to turn it through okay so let me just uh, move all my bits and bobs bear with I've got that iron still on so I'm going to get that out of the way I'm going to bring my sewing machine in uh, okay so let's just um, go to the side camera are we getting strange comments oh well um, uh, um, my um, my lovely friend Jackie Thomas can block anybody that uh, that causes us uh, any issues. So Jackie, uh, fill your boots. <laughs> fill your boots. We don't take strangers. No, we don't. Anyway, or strangers that are nasty. Anyway, there we go. So look, there's my little pocket there, and. Um, <laughs> I think Abigail is doing a La La Land marketing campaign. I can see all her comments. I think she's got less than 20 tickets. <laughs> Back to less than 20 tickets left. It's crazy. 
Oh, Abigail says she's on the case. Good. Jackie, get in there. <laughs> right, so we're going to stitch down these short sides. It's, do you know what? My admin team are just the best people in the whole world. Let me just tell you that for nothing. They are amazing. They sort me out all the time and I love them for it um, because they can do things that I can't do, like when I'm stitching. So, <laughs> oh, somebody's advertising. Oh, Jackie will get rid of him. She's very good. Yeah, I bet she's on the case. I bet he's all already gone. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's because it's an, um, a public page, you see. Um, and, you know, we, sh we should be flattered that somebody wants to offer us something to sell. Right, so there we are. So I've stitched down that side and that side, right sides together. There's my opening there with my two edges uh, folded over. And we're just going to... Um, Somebody says, don't click on it, it may be dangerous. Well, you're not going to click on it, are you, ladies? Come on, we know, we know not to click on things. Just ignore it. Um, as I say, Jackie will be on the case. It'll be fine, be fine, let's not panic. So we're going to just push the corners out with your um, a nice um, sort of turning tool, pokey tool. I'm not going to say pokey tool because you don't want a sharp... Um, turning tool you want something I mean a, a knitting needle is very good for nice little corners like this and um, but if this is this is what I would call a pokey tool you absolutely don't want to use that as a pokey tool you can see the difference I mean that would go straight through the corner so something nice and rounded and and, um, and friendly friendly to your corners so that's our pocket made. So don't worry that it's got an opening here, okay? Because that opening, when we put it on our pocket, on our inside of our lining, it's going to get stitched, okay? And when we top stitch around here, across here and up, when we put it on the lining, obviously all of this will be closed off, okay? So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to stitch it, glue it, tack it, pin it. Well, you can pin it, but anyway. So that's the, the open edge there is what we're going to stitch as we put it on our lining, okay? Somebody else advertising now. Okay, well, don't worry, ladies, because our Jackie will be on the case like a whippet out of a trap. And it's marvellous. It's absolutely marvellous that she can do that for us. So you mustn't worry. Jackie will be on it. I know it. I can feel it in my water. I can feel it in my water. <laughs> Right, so I'm on the overhead again because I need to do some more measuring. So, um, looking at the pattern, and if you've got the pattern in front of you, we are on, I think, let me see, we're on picture number six. Um, and we're going to mark down from this top edge here, okay? And I'm not going to give you the measurement, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to hide some of it so you can't see, because I don't, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a small business and I really would like you to buy the pattern. Right, so I'm just marking it like that. Can you see? I've made a little mark. I really want you to be careful when you use a heat erasable pen. I want you to test it on a scrap of fabric, okay? Because um, some, well, some fabrics are not very friendly with heat, with heat erasable pens, batiks particularly. So do be careful. If necessary, just do a few little dots because that's quite friendly, little dots. But I've actually drawn a line, difficult to see, but I've drawn a line just so I've got a guide of where to put my pocket, okay? And there's a certain measurement for that, so you mustn't worry. So now what we need to do is we need to find the center of our pocket. Got a little loose thread there. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and you could give this a press so it's lovely and neat. And I'm just going to give it a finger press, okay? So that's given, can you see it's made a lovely crease. I'm then going to fold this in half and I'm going to give this a finger press. In fact, if you've got your magic seam wand, use that because that is exactly what it's for. Okay, we'll do a nice press. Let's put that back in there. I keep that really handy. So you can see, it's, look at that, it's beautiful, made a lovely press. So all you're going to do now is match up the dots, if you like, match up the lines. 
So you're just going to place your folded edge along that line and look at, there's my open edge there. So we want this to be our pocket, okay? Not the other way round. We want our pocket to be like that. So I am going to pin this. I know, don't be shocked. <laughs> I am going to pin it. Uh, I'll take the pins out as soon as I start, you know I will, but I, I just like to make sure at least start off right. So let's pop one there as well. I've just got a little bit of a loose thread there, which is driving me batty. So I'm just going to remove it. So now what you're going to do, so don't forget, this is the top. So where your poppers are, this is the top. This is where we're going to stitch along there, along there and up there. And you're going to stitch, um, now what does Kath say? Top in central. You just turn the page, eighth an inch. Um, so we're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch around here. So actually, I mean, that would take a credit card, wouldn't it? That would take a credit card if you wanted, you know, if you wanted somewhere quick to access a credit card or um, or like a store card or something like that. Or um, I have a loyalty card for our uh, garden centre that we, I go to, our farm that I go to. And uh, you get points, don't you? Get points, you get prizes. So... Um, uh, you can store it there so it's in, in view, you can get it quite easily. So I always start, and when it's something like this, I always start a little way away. So I want you to have a look where my needle is. So there's my needle, there. Can you see the edge of the fabric is here, back along. It's, it's almost quarter inch away from the needle, so I'm back along. Sometimes when you use fabrics, uh, or depending on actually, sometimes if your needle is a little blunt, you don't want that to be screwed up. You don't want to start off with a really screwed up edge. So I start a little bit far in and then I go back and then I come forward. And I find that to be a much better way of starting something like this. So I'm going to do one stitch and then I'm going to come back. There we go. And then I'm going to go again. So a quarter of an inch all the way along. And do press this if you feel that you need to make it really super duper neat. And uh, it actually makes for more accurate stitching. Let's just make sure I've got that lined up. There we go. Um, so yeah, so don't be afraid. Always give something a little press. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's sort of, um, you know, as a dressmaker in my in my youth, uh, you know, we pressed everything within an inch of its life. So what we're going to do is take our needle just over the folded edge of that pocket. So you can see where my needle is. It's just over the edge. And then I'm going to do a couple of reverse stitches um, and that's enough. It's not going to be a pocket that's going to be really heavily used. So um, it doesn't need a triangle to reinforce it. It doesn't need masses of Back stitching it just needs to be secure so there's our pocket if I get it straight there's our pocket attached okay and all of these marks will come out eventually where we crease because we will obviously give it an iron um, oh there yeah, Jackie Thomas says gift card for the kids chocolate bar and chocolate bar for Abigail <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, so there we are. So that's that step done. So let's just quickly go back to the front just for a moment while I have a quick look at the pattern just to see where I'm at. Hopefully we're all settled now. So I've got my piece on the on the desk. I know you can't see it, but we'll go on the overhead in a sec. So <laughs> let's have a look. Uh, oh, now we need to do a bit, bit more measuring. OK, we need to do a bit more measuring. Um, so let's, um, I'm going to do that actually like this and then I'll show you and that way you don't get to see the measurements because after all I want you to buy the pattern. So it says take the outer fabric piece, outer fabric, outer fabric. So this is my, this is my outer fabric with the Easter eggs on, isn't it lovely? It's the fabric I bought from Abigail actually. And it says that we're going to... Uh, fold in half. I'm not giving you any measurements. I'm just telling you what we're, what we're doing. Folding in half. Okay. Flip it over so it looks like... Uh, let's just get that bit of thread out. I will show you. I promise. Uh, da, 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 da. Measure. Right. Got it now. Here we go. So I'll mark it and then I'll bring you back onto view so you can see what I've done. It's not a, it's not a top secret. It's just if, you, if you've bought the pattern... 
then you get to uh, obviously then you'll know what we're doing so I'm going to go on the overhead let's just move my lining out of the way are we having a lovely time is everybody happy is everybody uh, stitching is anybody stitching along with me sometimes I um I don't get to hear if you are anymore sometimes cause, perhaps because I don't um, see the comments so uh, anyway so look there's my outer fabric um, there and there's my notches that I cut right at the very beginning now in the pattern it says to fold your fabric in half which is what I did let me just do it so you can see and then it says to measure a certain amount from each side and you're going to mark it so I've marked it there and I've marked it there so let me bring that down and hopefully you can see those are the two places I've marked it and that's where the other other side of the poppers go you know the fat side <laughs> I'm sorry there's no better way <laughs> no better way so now we need to bring in our silicon mats again so like I said to you before um, these are you can get silicon mats like this um, but you could also use an old um, wooden uh, sort of chopping board or something like that um, I would use something you're not going to use for food anymore only because you're making holes in it and it could lead to, to bacteria and things so once again we're going to get our little poppers here our snaps and I'm just going to once again put the, the circle oh you can see that beautifully the circle over where I made my marks and I don't suppose it really matters whether you put them that way or whether you put your marks let me just move that a little bit um, like that top to bottom or side to side I don't think it really matters not not really so let's just do the same for this one so at least we've got a matching pair now you don't need to stabilize because you'll have already stabilized your fabric okay and in the pattern Kath tells you exactly what stabilizer to use and and what which part you need to stabilize so you mustn't worry if you've got the pattern you will know all of these things nothing is left to chance um, and it's great that you've got the video to help you um, and it, a lot of people appreciate that for the visual I, I do and I do get it I absolutely do get it so I've done that on the wrong side of my fabric only because you, it's very clear for you to see but actually we want to do it put the um, snaps on this side now little word of warning you can see that my fabric is a little bit directional because we've got fronds if you like coming along like this but when you look at it overall it really doesn't look directional now I would say for this pattern please don't use directional fabric because you'll have upside down bits and right side round bits so please just use a, a fabric that looks pretty much like this even though this has got you know I don't mind pointing it out it has got directions but for me the overall picture looks non-directional so I'm putting my legs through the holes <laughs> and I'm going to flip it over again to put the washers on the back okay so let's just push those in and flip it if you've used a punch tool like this or similar to this there's a really small hole punch that you can use as you it has three that they are sort of held in the cap here so you want the smallest one because really when you put the legs through you don't want them to keep falling out um, it gives it extra stability so we're going to put our washers over the top and once again I'm going to use the back of my scissors uh, I'm going to get a smaller pair because <laughs> those others were a little bit big and I'm just going to push them down a little bit there we go and again like that and obviously you're not going to use your best dressmaking scissors are you you're going to use an old pair or something else you know whatever you've got to hand that you don't mind if it slips or, or scratches anything so again we'll just 
use my hammer to spread the legs out so it's nice and strong and if we have a look at it you can see what that looks like and like I said I don't think it matters too much whether you put them across like that or across like that as long as they're uh, okay oh Rachel and Bridget said yes you and Rosella were upside down oh gosh we had an absolute scream you must watch it if you want to laugh I think even my John chuckled a little bit which you know quite that's quite something right so now what we're going to do, do is join both pieces together so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because it's nice if you can see the whole lot let's just do that oh in oh gosh let's do it a little bit better than that ah, that's a bit better one day I'll change the oops I'll change the view oh hold on that's my Easter egg bag from last week. Got chocolates in it. I don't want the dog to get them. Whoops. <laughs> um, yes, I'd, I'd rather you did have a view of me leaning up, but there we are. So um, apart from the fact that I'm in the corner and covering up that corner there, you can see that I've got my whole fabric with my snaps right in almost, well, they are in the centre, aren't they? And I'm going to get my lining now. We're going to do right sides together just pop them over the top and this is where you really will tell whether you've um, cut accurately and that both pieces sit nicely together okay now um, I'm, I'm actually going to pin I know this will come as a shock to a lot of you but I'm going to pin because the seam allowance is only an eighth of an inch now if you can't manage that because that's quite small I don't want you to not make this I want you to you I, what I want you to do is perhaps and I'll show you you could get a ruler and a pen and draw your lines and follow the lines I must admit I haven't cut this brilliantly it's not too bad it's not too bad but and I would say decide which side you're going to um, stitch uh, if I'm doing cushions, I always stitch from the front cushion side, like with the Easter bear, the well, the bunny bear. <laughs> I always stitch from the front cushion because that I know is accurately cut. Whereas my back pieces that I've sort of hemmed and folded, etc., etc., might not be um, as accurate as I'd like because I never measure anything. Well, when I'm stitching. So what you've got is the two pieces now, right sides together and you're now going to stitch now if you before you pin I would say is if you want to measure your eighth of an inch I would um, let me do it let me get a little ruler because that's going to be much easier uh, that hasn't got an eighth on it well that one has blow I'll use that one so before you put your pins on guys because otherwise they get in the way and I want you to line up your ruler let me just do that because I've got some pins in it's going to move um, and go round your whole piece so you've marked your eighth of an inch now I don't want you to worry uh, I don't know if you can see that but I don't want you to worry if you go a little bit bigger than that do the best you can and of course because we've drawn a line if you stitch on the left hand side of that line it's you're going to have a slightly wider seam allowance if you stitch on the right hand side of that line it's going to be less than an eighth of an inch so but don't don't get too hit up about it like I said do the best you can so I'll bring that up to the camera so um, you can see what I mean about that line okay so you could draw around the whole thing if you want to so let's turn this back how it was so there it is there we're going to stitch all the way around but what we want to do is leave a four inch gap somewhere on one of these long sides it doesn't matter where so let's just choose this side doesn't matter if it's up here or down there so whichever side you like and I'm just going to draw a line here and a line here okay so that's my four inch gap now the rule of thumb with this sort of thing is that you put in a double pin now if you was um, like a dressmaker if you were doing dressmaking you would put in a double pin like this so let's use that one and a double pin denotes a stop and start point so it could be something 
that you could learn to do and get into the habit of. As soon as you see a double pin, you're stopping. So we're going to start stitching around about here. I'll take the pins out, as you know, and we're going to go all the way around. Is everybody OK with that? Yes. Yes, Lizzie. We're very OK with that. Thank you. Right, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to bring in my machine. Let's slide it in. There we go. It's very handy having a mat. Uh, if you haven't made one yet, um, I do one called uh, Frankie, which is what this is. And Abigail did one the other day with using strips. So yeah, lots of lots of reasons to make a mat. It's very really nice to have little pockets here. See, I've got my wand in there. And you can put sharp tools in there so they, you don't catch them. And um, this, this little turning tool, I just keep next to it. I also keep my mouse there. <laughs> right, so we're going to go all the way round, about an eighth of an inch. Please don't worry. As I said, and I will keep saying that, if you can't quite manage that. So a couple of little stitches, and then you'll be going back. Two stitches, OK? I want you to stitch and then I want you to flip this over and I want you to make sure you've caught everything because unless your cutting was super duper accurate um, you might find little pieces where you might have um, not stitched so I want you to just check it there we go oh I'm gonna go back a stitch there that's it um, Oh no, in fact I can see it, I just want to come over a bit. The, the thing is we're going to use these edges, these short edges are quite important and you'll see um, as we go along why. If you've got a walking foot, can I suggest you use it? Because you want these fabrics to work together and go at the same speed underneath your, the foot of your machine. So pinning is great, a walking foot is brilliant. I've got a feed thingy on here that keeps everything in, in check. It's not too bad, quite like it. Um, but yeah, just pop your walking foot on. And if you're a gold member, um, I did a video on how to, um, I'm just gonna turn my stitch length down a little bit. <clears throat> um, yes, I did a video on how to put a walking foot on. So somewhere in the files. If I'm knocking the microphone, I do apologise. It's right near my stitching. So just keep everything lined up. The other thing is we're coming to our magnetic um, closures here. And if you're not careful, they, well, they will stick to the metal plate of your machine if you've got these flipped the other way around, so you're, you've got the magnetic bit fairly close to your machine. So be aware of that, because sometimes it, it kind of stops you moving forward. Yes, so for those people that are wondering whether to go to La La Land, um, I saw all the prizes today that Abigail has uh, got for us. And magnificent. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So we're just coming down the other side now. Whoops, it got caught on a pin. Hold on. Let's just um, take my needle up. There we go. That's it. Um, yeah, fantastic prizes. Really amazing. So, and I can't remember how many. So I'm now I'm taking my pins out because I've come to the mark. So I had pins, but I've also, can you see, I've got a mark. Yes, 500 pounds worth. There's lots. I, I, I rather wish I could win. I know I can't. So two little, two or three little stitches, back stitch, that's all you need. But you do need a little bit of security. Um, otherwise the seam will, will rip open. So there we are. So there's our opening there. So the next stage. Now, um, Kath has said in the pattern to, um, let me just have a quick look, make sure, using, uh, wrong side. yes, is to turn through and then 
fold uh, then iron the gap but I'm just going to show you a little trick um, that I learned myself the other day that might be useful to you um, and that is before you turn it through ooh, just check and make sure we've caught all our edges look I think we're all okay just check yeah I'm happy with that it looks all right not bad for, for an amateur right so this is my <laughs> gap here so all I'm going to do is and it's a tiny little seam allowance I'm just going to fold that fabric back I mean I, to be honest I think I'm a little bit too skimpy there but I'm not going to worry about it can't be worrying about things like that so I'm just folding that over um, I did find this a little bit easier than turning through and then ironing so can you see I folded that over and then flip it over and do the same the other side make sure you don't iron out that crease that you've just done and just fold it like that we're going to use a little bit of glue on this now if you want some fabric glue head to my Amazon shop because there's um, some on there right turn me on off I'll need it again in a minute but I'll just turn it off for a second so it's a bit wiggly woggly but I've turned that over okay I wouldn't bother about trimming your corners there's so little fabric there I for me it's better if you keep the bulk of the fabric there I don't want you to trim that away so while I'm turning that through we'll just go back to the front camera again you can admire my bunny bear my March bear here I'll show you in a minute um, Adrian did the pattern for us so lovely so lovely well you know it's gonna it's the same bear every month except that he he or she dresses up he just becomes the representative of March now I know Easter is in April I have found that out since last week and but we still have to make things in readiness and really even though he's a bunny bear it's kind of like spring isn't it I suppose he could have been a lamb but Laura will be saying yes he should have been a lamb laura has got sheep so let's pop the turning tool in there look again the soft corner one I want you to push those corners out don't forget we've got a definite shape at one end so let's try and keep to that definite shape so find the shape find those corners push them out I was just remembering about Rosella and I yesterday if, if you missed it, just when we're finished, scroll down the page, this Lizzie Curtis page, and look for the video with Rosella and I. There's two. The first one's only a couple of minutes long because I pressed the finish button by mistake. <laughs> she went, don't press that, and I pressed it. Pressed it. <gasps> Can't be trusted. And we are like two naughty school children when we get together. I don't know why it is, because I'm not like it with anybody else, really. And she's, I don't think she is either. It's just that we obviously got this sort of, um, I don't know, natural comedic chemistry. Yeah. So look, I've poked my corners out nicely. Not too much. Haven't gone mad. Don't forget this end is a definite shape. If I show you that way, you'll see better. So you see where the pocket is? Okay. So it needs a press now. And I'm not going to, I am going to press it. I, I'm going to glue it and I'm going to press it so let's just bring my mat in if you use a wet glue like this um, do be careful you don't spill it over onto everything and everything on your desk um, you really don't need a lot of fabric glue fabric glue is designed to be super duper sticky where's mine I've, I've actually got some a better wet glue I mean this is good but um blah, blah, blah. Calf. <laughs> <laughs> has suggested a different type of glue in the pattern but this this will do for me actually I couldn't find my other glue so let's just go on the overhead and you can see where I'm at so that's what I've got um, it's obviously still needs a press you can see where my join is there so all I'm going to do with this is open up my glue and just I'm just going to do the tiniest amount seriously and you'll think really but yeah, you don't you don't need 
I might bring it up to the camera so you can see. You really don't need a lot of fabric glue. It's designed to be super duper strong. There we go. And when you have put it on, I tend to just sort of rub it along with my finger just to spread it out a bit. So if I bring that up, you can see how little I've put on. But you need to work fast with any fabric glue like this. It, you want to work fast. Just, just bring those edges down. Bring your pokey tool in so you can see it's already stuck. Try and get them matched up. There we go, I might go quiet while I do this. I know, it's a treat for you, isn't it? <laughs> and it should be perfect, which it is. And I'll just screw my cap so it doesn't dry out. So now, of course, we've got, the, can you see, we've got this lovely, lovely sharp edge. If you put your iron on it, it'll dry the, and set the glue more quickly. It doesn't need a heat set to set it, don't get me wrong. But so all we're doing is, is drying it with the heat of the, the iron. So we'll just work our way around. It's important now to, to, to give this an iron. And so many times I see beautiful, beautiful makes that have never seen an iron. And it's like, why not? You should be ironing every single stage. And never think of it as a chore because it really does help you to achieve the perfect result. I, prom I promise, I promise. I don't say these things for nothing. Well, I might do, but I don't. Just be careful of your magnetic closures under there. If you, are, if you run your iron over them, you might take some, if you've got a, a mucky bottom, <laughs> you might transfer that because you've gone over the the poppers there so so do be careful excuse me licking my fingers if you're watching the front camera and um, the other thing you want to do is perhaps use some best press because best press will give you a lovely lovely sharp clean line i'm serious um it's not like water it's it's a kind of like a fabric starch it's not like your regular starch although if you have some of that please use it but it just gives you a lovely finish. Now I've got, oops, I've got quite a, I've got the big one here, the big boy. So I'm just going to, can you see how it curls? I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it curls it because it's wet. <laughs> so I'm just going to press that out. Do that again. So you get a little bit of stiffness, if you like. Um, it just gives it a lovely finish. You know, if you can imagine in the olden days, the, the maids and butlers used to starch the collars of uh, the gentlemen's shirts or the ladies' dresses, you know. Um, and this is kind of like the same thing, except we're doing it for us. We're not slaves to anybody. So that gives it a lovely, lovely finish. Like I say, be careful of those poppers. Just work around them. Okay. So I'm just switching my iron off there. I don't need that anymore. Let's pop that ironing mat down. <clears throat> so the next thing is we need to measure down from this top edge. So I'm going to do that off camera so you can't see. I know it's like cloak and dagger really, isn't it? Well, you know, I'm protecting my own, my own interests really. <laughs> so uh, let's just make a little mark. So I'll show you in a sec. Let me just do that. So I made a little mark here and here. Okay, here and here. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to fold up the bottom of our, oh, it's a thread, that's it. The bottom of our project, it's not a bag yet, is it? But so you can see there's the length of it. So it's just coming up and I'm going to pop it on those lines that I've just made. And if you want to, has anybody got the rainbow heart? <laughs> it took ages to come um, for Abigail. It really did take ages to get to her. Everything is so slow at the moment. We, you know, you order it and then it takes maybe six to eight weeks 
So I'm going to put a clip there just to hold that safe. A pin at this stage, you've got a lot of layers going on if you think about it. So then all you're going to do, you can iron this um, bottom fold here. I'll just give it a finger press, but an iron is a good idea, but you can always do it afterwards. And you're going to bring it up and in the pattern it tells you exactly the measurement that you need to bring it up and you're, you've got it so it's staggered. Can you see? You've got a staggered kind of fold there. So I'm going to take that clip out and clip that together. That's it. Take this clip out and clip that together. Now I want you to have a look at something before I stitch that. I'll just show you one more time my rainbow dish. There you go. Now, this is where I said to you that you need to make sure that your the all of your the width of your whole piece is is the same because as you fold these up and you do one fold then two folds, you can you see it's got to come right to the edge. What you don't want is it to be wider or this to be narrower if you can okay so you want it so it sits beautifully like that um, and then when we stitch it these will come over and there you have your Katie made so all we're going to do now is that we're going to stitch now what I'd like you to do again is to stitch start stitching a quarter of an inch from your fold here I want you to start stitching here go back come forward and start stitching. Quarter inch seam allowance now guys, all the way along here, across, across here, down to there, and then you're just doing your regular back stitch here. But you're only doing two or three stitches, we don't need to annihilate our, our project. But when we start, you're gonna start a quarter of an inch in, go back, come forward, and all the way around. Again, if you're not um, confident with your stitching, pop your ruler on and draw yourself a line. But like I said before, if you stitch, and I'll just draw this so we can see what it looks like. Um, here we go. So let me hold that up to the camera. So if you stitch this side of your quarter inch line, it's going to be smaller than quarter of an inch or probably more actually it's probably more accurate if you stitch this side of the line it's going to be more than quarter of an inch just so you're aware of that if you stitch right on the line then you're probably going to be about right but but if you think about it the ruler ended here and we've drawn this extra bit it's almost you know could, could be a millimeter really and so does it clog the needle? What, what, the glue? No, fabric. If it's got fabric written on it, then it's absolutely perfect, perfect, perfect for your stitching. Um, we're not using paper crafting things. We're using fabric glues. So whatever it is, whether it's a Visaline or Visaline, or whether it's a wet glue, or it could be um, quilter's tape, then it's fit for purpose and it's been tested to make sure it's fine. If you do get any residue on your needle, on here, and if you do an awful lot of free motion where you have uh, glued, you know, you've, you've used bond or web, heat and bond, all that sort of thing, you might get a little bit of residue on your needle. Well, in, um, at that, uh, when you see that, Get a little bit of your machine oil, a tiny bit of your machine oil, put it on a cloth and just wipe your needle over and that will clean it or change your needle. You may not have changed it for about six weeks. So <laughs> you could use this opportunity to change your needle. But it, it should be fine. So we're just going to put our needle in, do a few little stitches and then I'm coming right back over the edge of my work and then I'm coming forward again. Now somebody has said, could we put a little wrist strap in? Of course you can. And actually, Kath does suggest it in the pattern. So I would say, make sure that you um, are aware of where all your seams are and where you're going to put the, the wristlet strap. Maybe you want it as it folds over here. So if you look, that's the corner of the bottom piece. Yeah, it's the absolute opposite corner or the opposite edge. 
So I suggest you pop it in there and you'll be about in the right place. So let me just take my clips out. I just want to use my pokey tool to make sure all my edges are lined up. It's not too bad, I'm quite happy with it. And I'm just going to work my way around. If I need to use my pokey tool to hold things, I can. Um, and be careful when you come to your magnetic closures again. Make sure the foot that you're using is, <laughs> and mine's just kicked mine off, I was just about to say, doesn't kick you off. It, mine has done and I, I probably will unpick that and do that again or you could go make a less uh, less the top stitch less than quarter of an inch and then you'll you'll miss these uh, closures it won't kick your foot over because it will because that's what happened to mine just now <laughs> mind you I wasn't concentrating very well so just come down now look when you come to this bit here I want you to hold that down because the foot or the needle might push this bit out of the way. So just hold it down. So I'd just like to welcome all the YouTube viewers this evening um, and hope that you're all okay. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial. Um, so if you want to see this in future, it'll be with the pattern on the website. And it is a YouTube, the YouTube version that you'll see, not the Facebook one. The Facebook video will always be on my page, so you can watch it there if you want to. Um, but it's always available to you. I don't ever delete them. So there we are. So there's our Katie. I'll just trim my threads. And again here. There we are. Let's have that there. So I want you to have a look what happened at the top. Now, actually, it's still got the blue lines on where I, I drew. So I'll just take those off. My iron is still hot enough to take those off. I'm trying not to put it on the my mat. So, um, I mean, it's not too bad. <laughs> but if you, um, if you have a little look, you can see it's slightly, let me show you, just here. It, my foot butted up against this and just kicked it out hardly enough for anybody to worry about. But you could use a different foot, a narrower foot, but just be aware that you're going past this. You could make your seam a little less than a quarter of an inch and that will that will really help. So it's one of those things that you need to decide for yourself how, how it looks. So there we are, so there's our finished purse. I'll keep you there for the moment so you just see it. So we've got our pocket in the front here. We've got our pocket in the back, and but also we've got our pocket in the back there as well, on the backs, back of the lining there. So you could put your credit card in there, or like I said, a loyalty card or your postage stamps um, and then you've got all the different sections and of course then the snaps come over and they just literally close so that's two so luckily that's one each for the girls <laughs> they can have one each with um, a voucher or something in it's funny because this one looks pinker than that one it must be because I've picked up different parts of the, the fabric look it's the same fabric Yeah, same fabric. <laughs> but look, I want you to be aware of the direction. I'm not, I'm not worried about mine. So just use a directional, a non-directional fabric. It's fine. Good. There we are then. Super. So that is our Katie. That's n another super duper pattern from our Catherine, who is a genius, of course. Couldn't do anything without her. She keeps me on the straight and narrow. I need it. Um, so let's shall we have a look at the uh, bunny bear pattern. So this is our March pattern. It's got a yellow zip. Look. It's I've got like Norwich colours for John. So there is our book cushion for oh thread. Hold on. Didn't notice that before. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> so there I, I'll show you on the overhead in a sec. And a book will go in there, but I've left. I think I've left the books. Oh, I think they're over there somewhere. But there's the um, there's the, the the pocket. So let's just quickly go on the overhead so you can see him. He's going to get launched tomorrow. So there, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so he's got little rabbit teeth. 
But he's a bunny. I mean, I'm sorry, he's a bear. He is the normal bear. But um, so he's got rabbit teeth. He's got rabbit ears on a hairband. Do you see? Perhaps he's going to go to La La Land. He's wearing his hairband. And there's his ears, look. But he still is a bear because there's his bear ears. And you'll notice that the flowers are actually 3D. So for the, for the flowers, let me just try and centralise it. For the flowers, I've used a soft interfacing and then traced the pattern onto the interfacing, um, adhered it to the fabric and then cut the flowers out. So use a regular biro or pencil, that's what I used. And it kind of makes it quite interesting when you put a book in there. Pity I haven't got a book really. Let's put a Easter egg pouch in there. Oops. You can see that the flowers stick over the fold. I think that's quite nice. It's quite nice. Actually, that, that does look quite nice in there. Um, you can put as many flowers on as you like. I, obviously, it's, you know, it's your design to play with. I quite like the fact he had one near his near his his, his bow band. <laughs> and uh, so there we are. That's our little March Children in Need pattern and he will be launched tomorrow, sometime in the morning, um, probably by 10 o'clock and um, I'll do another live because you'll all need to see the March gold patterns that if you haven't seen them already and uh, we can go over this again. But yeah, so you have a look and he's, uh, he's very easy to stitch and you could probably get away with the regular foot actually. OK, so we're just literally past the um, the hour. So that's only because I wanted to show you our, our bunny bear. <laughs> I think he's so cute. I think he's, he's just the whole the whole series is going to be cute. Um, the other thing is we've raised uh, £1,365 so far with our bear patterns, which I, I can't believe, to be honest. It's outstanding. I didn't expect that at all. So I'm expecting you all to buy it again. I want you to buy it. You need to buy it. You are going to buy it. It doesn't matter if you don't make them up. Um, when Adrienne launched her gecko pattern to help um, the Ukraine, I bought five. Why would you need five? Well, why not? It's supporting a good cause, isn't it? And that's what this is. So there we are. So we've made Katie. So please go and buy the pattern and make your Katie. We've also shown you the, the bunny bear for March. <laughs> I think he's so cute. I'm going to have 12 of these, you know that, on, in my room. I've got the other two over there. I need to have a new storage system going on. Perhaps I have to just take them out, the, the cushions, the pillows, you know, pillow pads. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your uh, your time with me. It's absolutely super that you that you join in. I really appreciate your company. Um, it's just such a lovely place to be on a Monday night at seven. And long may it continue. So I will see you all again soon. Uh, if you're in the Gold Club, I see I'll see you Thursday for something really special. So if you're in the Gold Club, on Facebook, in the Gold members. Um, Facebook group. We're doing something really special on Thursday. If not, I will see you on Monday next week. Bye everybody. Bye.